we're very pleased to bring you George Chorak from Power Marketing in the Community Spotlight. George was a great inspiration to me when my own business was young, and I've heard many other, many others echo this sentiment. Now, George has been a professional speaker for 12 years. He is an author and a marketing expert. George also runs a weekly radio show called Business in Motion on Fridays at 12 noon from CFMU 93.3. Welcome, George, and thank you for coming to the studio today. Thank you, Marie. It's a pleasure to be with you here today. That's great. George, tell me a little bit about your background and how you go, got involved into this business. Uh, we would be here for days. <laughs> the, the, the short answer is my background is quite eclectic. I was lucky that early in my career, my corporate career, I was um, I was let go a few times. And mm -hmm. We used to actually call it getting fired back then. <laughs> and I was lucky enough that I worked in several different industries. And every industry I moved from, I took ideas. And it's that perspective that helps me the most today because when I work with my clients, I don't specialize in any one industry. I take ideas from the last client to the next client. And the clients always have good ideas. Everyone has something that they're doing well. And it's just a matter of looking at that saying, why is that work and how can I make it work over here in mm -hmm. a different industry? Mm -hmm. And that's what I bring. Okay, that's great. Now, one of the things I've always loved about uh, George is these wonderful little stickers that he hands out, but we've always done this, this we've done it this way with it crossed out. George, tell me about the message behind this. Uh, Marie, the, the message is that the, the danger for anyone in any industry is to get comfortable. Mm -hmm. And when we get comfortable, we keep doing things the same way without thinking about why we're doing it that way. And that's okay when things are good, when times are good. But then when times get bad, when times get rocky, we especially have to, and that's why today's such a, such a wonderful opportunity, because we need to ask questions, why are we doing it that way? And somewhere there's an answer. The real issue is, does the answer still apply? And if it doesn't apply anymore, then we need to change. We need to look for something new. In fact, I heard from another, uh, another expert uh, just recently. He said that if you don't like the answers you are getting, then ask different questions. So true. So true. And in this day and age, that's even more true because the answers are changing with the technology as well. Very much, yeah. This, the answer that you had last year might not be the same this year. Exactly. And especially in business, especially mm -hmm. in marketing, especially when it comes to the technology side in the internet because it's mm -hmm. so changing. I, one time I, I didn't believe in blocks uh, and now I have five of them. <laughs> Things change. Exactly. So what are, what are some of the mistakes that people make with their marketing? A number of mistakes. Probably the three biggest mistakes I've seen in marketing is number one, people only think of marketing as advertising. And the only time you think about it, advertising is when the ad salesperson calls them. Mm -hmm. So when the person calls to renew the yellow page ad, or the person calls to sell the ad for the newspaper, that's the only time they think about their advertising, which means they are not following a strategy. It doesn't, they're not following strategy. The second biggest mistake I see is that people are trying to send too many messages. They need to send one message. Coca-Cola, one of the most successful companies around for about 100 years in business, even for 100 years, with all the millions they spend on marketing, they have, with one exception, they, when they came up with the new Coke, they had made a mistake, but with that one exception, they've been sending one mistake or one message all the time. And that one message is that Coke makes you feel good. All The logos change and the jingles change and those things can change, but the message has to stay the same. People need to figure out what their real message is, one message. Okay, and, and, that, and that makes total sense. Now, what about a business that has more than one product or service they're offering? Um, how do they portray that? I'm glad you asked that because some businesses, for whatever reason, they are selling more than one product or one service. The question is this, is that product or service to a different market? Who's the target audience? If the product or service is to the very same target audience, then the message should be the same. Yeah, and that, and that makes total sense. So, so George, tell me, what's hot and new in the marketing world? Ah, uh, what's hot and new is that marketing is full of so many choices today and choices drive people crazy. If you go into an ice cream parlor and they have three flavors, it's pretty easy to pick the one you want. <laughs> right. For me, it's always chocolate anyways. But if you go in and they have 39 flavors, 
people have a problem. You stand there, what am I going to pick? What, do I, what about this one? Never heard of that. That sounds good. That. And the people are looking at marketing the same way because there's too many things to pick from. What they need to do is figure out three, maybe three things that they do really well and make that their major marketing focus and stick with it. But don't try to do five things this month and six things different next month and seven months, you know, pick two or three things that they think will work well and stick with them and give them a good run and, you know, and then tweak them as they go. That's what people need to do. Okay. okay. And, I, and I totally agree because I find there's just so many different things that you could be doing, you know, and it's very hard sometimes just to focus in the areas that you know are working for you. And I know sometimes you may have to try different things. But you know, you try and make at least make that educated guess as to where your target market really is. You can try different things, but don't try everything different new every month. Right. Get something. See, it's like juggling. Everyone can <laughs> ju everyone can juggle one ball at a time. Everyone right. can juggle one ball at a time. And when you learn to juggle, mm -hmm. you first learn with one ball. And then when you get one ball going, then you add the second ball. And then when you get good enough to do two balls, you add the third ball. But you don't start off with three balls. And the same thing is in marketing. Figure out one thing, get it going well, and then add something new. So, so the thing you're always trying new is mm -hmm. not the thing that's most important to your business. Very good advice. Now tell me about your publications. Have you got anything new in the works? Since my book came out, in fact, it's now about 10 years since it first came mm -hmm. out. It's a bestseller in Canada and mm -hmm. it's published in seven countries, Secrets of Power Marketing. Mm -hmm. the, since then, I have published more on the article and ebook side. So I have an ebook on, on networking. I have, mm -hmm. I have several uh, publications on presentation skills. And I've published pretty close to 400 articles uh, by now, both in print publications as well as on the internet. Mm -hmm. And the reason I focus more on the articles is because it, it's quick and easier to do. Exactly. <laughs> That's when it comes down to it. It's quick and easier yeah. to do. And it's easier to turn that into small products. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so true. And I find, of course, with the internet, people have a very short attention span, too. So to just to, for them to read one article is great, as opposed to, oh, I'll download that ebook and I'll get to it later. Sometimes finding the time to get to that whole book is another you know, little thing that just sits there and they don't get to. So I find very much I'm the same way. If, if I'm looking at a, uh, a, a video or an audio and it says that it's three minutes, well, okay, I'll listen or I watch it for three minutes. But if it's seven, it's not seven minutes, I don't want to sit there for yeah. seven minutes. Can't they get it to me faster? Yeah. And, and people are more uh, more impatient these yeah, days. That's true. Unless it's something you're really interested in, it's your topic of, you know, you think, oh, yeah, I need to know about that topic. Then you know, I find myself, okay, I'm willing to sit there and watch that whole thing. Um, and I know myself, I'll download a video on a topic I'm interested in, and I'll sit there and I'll more or less listen to it while I'm working at my desk doing something else. So, you know, I find the audio and the video is a great way to, to learn something. And you can multitask a little bit at the same time when you're doing, doing it through the Internet. Uh, so George, George also runs um, a Business in Motion radio show, and he's been doing this for over 13 years. Um, tell us a little bit about the show. The radio show, I love doing the Business in Motion on 93.3 FM, Fridays at noon here in Hamilton and, and on the Internet. Um, I interview business leaders, mm -hmm. uh, entrepreneurs, uh, senior executives, and business authors. In the beginning, I started the radio show because I thought it would help my business. Right. And I thought I would do it for two or three years. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I love it so much <laughs> that I don't want to let go. I found that the radio show has helped me, has helped my business and helped me in ways that I never could have predicted. Now, it does not help me in the sense that somebody hears me on the radio and then says, oh, we've got to hire that guy. It doesn't work that way. Right. Well, how it works is that because of the radio show, I learn from the people that I interview, just mm -hmm. as you're going to do that from, from all the folks you talk with. Uh, number two, make connections with them. So it gives me an excuse to call somebody. If, if I'm calling you up to sell you something, you might not take the phone. But if I'm calling you up to, to invite you to be on my show, you probably might talk to me. And I also found that it helped develop my own communication skills. It mm -hmm. forced me to listen. Because in the beginning, I used to have all my questions written down, and I would read them. And once I got comfortable enough to listen to people, 
we had better conversations. And it helped me in my consulting and my speaking business because then I could spend more time. Uh, and it made me more comfortable dealing with people outside of my field, field or people who I was intimidated by mm -hmm. initially. So through the radio show, I'm now able to sit down with the CEO of a, a billion dollar company and have a conversation mm -hmm. because I know what I'm good at and exactly. I don't pretend to be good at something that I'm not good mm -hmm. at. And they will, and folks will respect you if you know and show what you're good at mm -hmm. and don't pretend to be something you aren't. So it was, exactly. it was a great lesson. I recommend it for, you know, every, every college, every university has some kind of community radio and mm -hmm. community TV. I highly recommend it for anyone to do it for a couple years anyways. Exactly. And I find that myself with, with doing the interviews on the show with our um, business members. The things that I learn about them, it's just fascinating and, you know, it's wonderful. It gives a whole new level to that relationship that I have with those clients as well. And most successful people, most business, and, and success is relative, mm -hmm. you know, you know, success for you is different for me and, and it's all relative, uh, but most successful people are quite happy to talk about what they learned. Right. Because they learn something, you know, they ha they might have had a lucky break here and there, but mostly it was hard work. Okay. And they're happy to pass on their advice and what they learn to others because it's one of the ways we give back to others. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to come on to the show today. Thanks, Marie, for having me on your show. It was a pleasure to be here.